Welcome to worship with the White Plains Presbyterian Church. Before we meet again for worship, spring will be here, on Saturday in fact. At a recent church council meeting, we began by sharing signs of the coming spring with one another, things that we have seen. I hope you've enjoyed the signs of spring that I've seen this week along the Bronx River, our local watershed. The end of daylight savings time today and the setting back of our clocks reflect the lengthening of daylight hours, which is good news for our solar energy system. We are called to worship today with the words of Psalm 107. Oh, give thanks to God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those God redeemed from trouble. God gathers us from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Let us thank God for God's steadfast love, for God's wonderful works for us and all creation. And yet we are at times and in many ways less than faithful to one another, aren't we? And we have not treasured creation or taken care of structures and systems that support life for all. Christ lifts up our brokenness so that we might see the wounds of the world. Because only in the light of Christ can we find healing and mercy. Let us confess our sin before our merciful and healing God. Let us pray. O God, you have set before us our greed, our hatred, and self-hatred, our fear and our apathy. You have also shown us the injustice and tyrannies of our public life. We have succumbed to paralyzing anxiety in response to injustice. We have resisted the prompting of your spirit who nudges us out of self-absorption. Empower us by your spirit to be attentive and discerning partners in healing your creation. Now let our prayers continue with a moment of silence in which we may offer to God our personal confessions. Amen. God's healing mercy abounds. God's grace goes before us, after us, through us, sometimes even unbeknownst to us. Friends, hear the good news of the gospel. We are forgiven and restored to right paths of justice and shalom. Thanks be to God. Now, as we turn to scripture, let us ask for God's assistance in hearing, understanding, and responding. Pour out your spirit upon us, O God, to open our hearts so that we may discern your word in and through the words we are about to hear. Show us your way in Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Listen for the word of God. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Moses led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. And then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When God saw that Moses had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then God said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. God said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then God said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, Moses, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. God said, I will be with you, 
And this shall be the sign for you, that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is God's name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. God said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. On March 11, 2020, the World Health Organization declared the coronavirus crisis a global pandemic. A year later, almost 30 million of us have been infected with the virus, and we have lost more than 530,000 to the COVID-19 in the United States. This suffering and grief has been compounded by dramatic job loss, tenuous unemployment benefits, housing loss and insecurity, and bare bones stimulus payments. What a relief it was on Thursday when President Joe Biden signed a $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan Act. This bill takes an important step forward in rescuing many of those who have been hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. Over 54% of the act's relief money goes directly to poor and middle-class families to rebuild our economy from the ground up. Further, the plan's economic and health provisions are investments in racial justice for black and brown Americans who have been disproportionately devastated by the pandemic. The act is expected to reduce child poverty by more than 50%, an advance that is desperately needed and helped by the expansion of the child tax credit. Now, many of us are truly relieved to know that we will get continued unemployment and stimulus checks that the child tax credit will help us make ends meet in these terrible times. But while the passage of the American Rescue Plan Act is an important milestone in helping American families, the exclusion of immigrant workers from this COVID-19 package is troubling and continues to compromise our nation's recovery. As the prophet Isaiah would say, it treats the wounds of the people lightly. Nearly 70% of undocumented workers labor as essential workers. They risk regular exposure to COVID-19 to keep our nation going, and they labor in the five essential professions, five essential professions that have experienced a 50% increase in the mortality rate due to COVID. As a congregation, we have identified two of the three threats to the life that God intends for us as structural racism and systemic inequality. Immigrants are the very fabric of our society. If the American Rescue Plan is to be anything other than a rescue plan for certain Americans, narrowly defined, we must listen to and walk with those who have been excluded. We cannot distance ourselves so that we can get on with life as usual. And that will be a terrible temptation for us. So I wonder, anachronism aside, if Moses wouldn't relate. After all, Moses knew exactly what was happening to his own people under Pharaoh. He knew and he ran. Yes, he ran after he killed an Egyptian crew leader in anger. An emotionally understandable but really tactically stupid move. He ran because he was scared, because he was frustrated because he thought that there was nothing he could do to change the way things were. Moses knew exactly what was happening to his own people under Pharaoh, and it made him mad, mad enough to kill. But that outrage ultimately did nothing, absolutely nothing, to help him or the enslaved Hebrews. Moses ran. He ran and he sought to, anest to anesthetize himself by taking a wife and getting a steady job. Moses did everything he could to distance himself from the obscene degradation of Egypt's brickyard, where the great monuments of Pharaoh's power 
The pyramids were built through the sweat and blood of his kin, sweat and blood that because of his accidental royal rearing, he had not had to endure. And then sometime into his self-imposed isolation from the brickyards of Egypt, while tending sheep by a mountain, God roared out to him out of a burning thorn bush, wake up, this is about you, enough running and hiding, enough, you are connected to this story. And though anxious, it is to Moses and his wife's credit that they made the decision to return and risk everything for human freedom and well-being. They could have stayed safe, miles away, and closed their ears to the news from Egypt and the moral demand that echoed from the burning bush. This pandemic has hit us hard as a church. Each one of us has stories of grief, of isolation, of anguish, the question is not whether we have suffered, we have, in different ways, but whether in that suffering we curl inward to protect ourselves or whether we would hold one another in that pain and allow the hardship we have experienced to create a line of understanding and empathy that opens us outward. A week ago, our church council was approached by Make the Road New York. Make the Road is the largest immigrant-led organization in New York State, and they approached us on behalf of the Fund Excluded Workers Coalition. Right now, there is a statewide worker-led campaign to pass legislation in Albany to create a fund for excluded workers who have received not one cent from New York State since the pandemic began last year. These workers are among the 1.2 million New Yorkers who were explicitly included from receiving assistance from the federal government and the state during the COVID pandemic. These 1.2 million of our neighbors include both documented and undocumented workers, recently incarcerated and cash economy workers, day laborers, street vendors, domestic workers, and more. Only 5% of the households in immigrant black and brown communities received unemployment insurance, despite nine in 10 of those surveyed losing their job or income. Right here in Westchester, families excluded from relief are going hungry at unprecedented levels, even as the disproportionate number of them work on the front lines as essential workers. The message from Albany has been, while your labor is essential, you are expendable. Starting March 15th, tomorrow, until April 1st, essential and excluded workers and others will put their bodies on the line by launching a voluntary fast across the greater New York City area. The already hungry, choosing hunger to wake up the people and lawmakers in New York State to this dire situation. These workers are calling for an excluded workers fund, providing direct cash assistance to thousands in need to be included in the New York State budget on April 1st. The Workers Coalition approached us and asked if they might fast inside our church. When I brought this request to our council and to our phased reopening committee, the leaders of our congregation responded in equal measure with empathy for the workers and their families and righteous anger that the government at all levels would abandon the most vulnerable families in our community. Our leaders did not say, our church leaders did not say, oh, that's terrible, really a shame, and then turn away. Instead of pity, they extended the church's partnership at this most crucial hour. Our council has decided to provide a safe space where fasting workers can gather over the next two week period we're offering exclusive use of the Lower Fellowship Hall and adjoining bathrooms. Our phased reopening commission met this week and believes that we can do this with minimal risk under conditions which they have laid out. There might be a few serious fasters who stay for the duration, but most will be present for just two or more days, a rolling fast. Volunteer staff will be present at all times to ensure observance of the protocols and that uh, workers are kept active and busy and engaged and to assist the fasters and medical staff and volunteers will be here to ensure the health and safety of, of all those participating in the fast. Now all of you 
Whether you are our virtual friends or longtime members of the congregation, you can support this important witness. First, by praying for the excluded workers and their families, and praying for the lawmakers in Albany. And next, you can spread the word and let your friends and family in New York know that this fast is going on and urge them to support the workers and the legislation. And there will be digital calls to action and more opportunities to bear witness and cards and support and encouragement, cards of support and encouragement for the fasters themselves can be mailed to the church and we will share them with the workers. This Lent, one year into the pandemic, we know more than ever the profound truth that the Reverend Dr. King, echoing the moral reminder to Moses from the ancient burning bush, we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. It is the message we will carry forward with excluded workers as we demand New York State create a fund for excluded workers. And to every worker and family who has been excluded from economic relief, this church says clearly and strongly, that is wrong. You belong and we are with you. We are part of one human family and we will go the distance with you. Amen. And now the choir will sing for us a woman and a coin, a song about how precious each one of us are in God's sight. What love, what love. A woman and a coin, the coin is lost. How much it means to her, what time and tone. What part it was to play in her bright dreams. Am I that treasured coin, worth searching for? I'm found in you, rejoice, what love, what shepherd and a sheep, the sheep is lost. Far from the flock, the one in hundred cries. Then risking life, the shepherd's voice and staff. Am I that treasured sheep worth dying for? I live and you rejoice, what love, what love. A parent and a child, a child is lost. A parent feeds on memories and hope. A prodigal on husks and one last chance. Am I that treasured child worth waiting for? I hope and you rejoice, what love, what love. Dear God, you sought us when the room was lost. You The scriptures are just filled with calls from God to honor the workers, to honor laborers. And I'm excited uh, that White Plains Presbyterian Church will have this opportunity to continue living into that call as we open the doors to excluded workers and their fast. This week at Stony Point Center, we received sad news that five out of the 10 beehives that are kept here on campus had died. And 
as I was very much thinking about workers and uh, White Plains Presbyterians move this week to offer solidarity and support, I thought of these bees and the essential work that they've provided to the farm over the years. And with a lot of sadness in our hearts here in the community um, and concern about what happened to these bees, um, we also gave thanks for the vegetables that wouldn't have grown without their presence here on campus. And so I share that story because that's the image that we have in our prayer today as we offer a prayer for workers, the workers that God honors and dignifies in their work and calls for us to do the same. So you will see in the video just a few busy bees um, uh, getting ready for work this spring. And I invite you now to pray. Creator of all, from our first breath to our last, you invite us into ongoing work of creation. You connect us to communities and formation, ecosystems sustained by each living participant, an earth shaped by the sum of its parts. In scripture, you speak to us a vision of wholeness, of good and honored work to benefit and not harm the earth, of cycles of labor and rest that acknowledge the limits of our bodies and minds, of fair pay and just treatment so that all are cared for and nourished. As we pray and act for the flourishing of this vision, we join our prayers to all calling for a better way. We pray with the immigrant workers, excluded and unrecognized, who will gather in the White Plains Presbyterian Church building to fast, to pray, to demand their rights to be honored, their work to be valued. We pray with all who are unemployed and desperate for work, with all who experience discrimination, harassment, or abuse in the workplace, with all who are shamed for their inability to enter the workforce, with the many who labor in uncompensated work, with all who have lost their lives because of the dangers of their workplace. We pray with all who struggle to survive in our economic ecosystem as wealth piles up for the few. We pray for a return to the heart a return to our wholeness. We cannot survive, we cannot flourish, until the needs of all are met. In this moment of rest, as we join together in prayer, we listen for your voice calling us to live and to work towards a restored creation. In silence, we listen to you as you pray our lives into being. Holy Spirit, move among these prayers and move us to live in response to the prayers of our neighbors. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray this vision of love's reign on earth, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Receive this benediction from Cesar Chavez's prayer for the farm workers' struggle. May God bring forth song and celebration, so that the Spirit will be alive among us. Let the Spirit flourish and grow, so we will never tire of the struggle. Go in peace to love and to serve. Amen.